My name is John Haritunian, and I first came to Brookwoods in 1963 as a 14-year-old. And a few years after that, I started working with kids as a counselor. Um, I worked for a little while. I worked in the boathouse. For a longer while, I worked in the craft shop under the legendary Uncle JJ. In particular, Aunt Rose suggested that I turn Narnia into an activity. So I first did Narnia in the summer of 1985. Well, this lamppost uh, does bear a resemblance to the magical lamppost under which uh, Lucy meets the fawn, Mr. Tumnus, in uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And so that is considered, in Narnian lore, it's considered one of the sacred places of Narnia. Today, I read to all three classes a special excerpt from uh, the Narnian story, The Horse and His Boy. Quote, Who are you? And the response is, One who has waited long for you to speak, said the thing. Its voice was not loud, but very large and deep. And then, later on in the conversation, where uh, it's obviously Aslan, the lion, uh, there are some things that Shasta just doesn't understand about what, uh, concerning uh, what Aslan is doing. And so he asks the question again, who are you? And this time the response goes like this. Myself, said the voice, very deep and low so that the earth shook. And again, myself, loud and clear and joyful. And then the third time, myself, whispered so softly that you could hardly hear it and yet it seems to come from all around you as if the leaves rustled with it. And there are a number of things that make this a great teaching moment in Narnia. First of all, it is, I think, an indirect reference, or at least it reminds me, of what happened to the children of Israel and Moses, who was commanded to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And when he asked God, what? shall I say about the one who has sent me? God did not say, tell him Yahweh or Jehovah has sent you because Pharaoh was not ready to hear that. He just said, I am has sent you. It's even more significant that Aslan says myself three times. The first time is very deep and low and shakes the earth. And that may be a reference to God the Father. The second time it's loud and clear and joyful an evident reference to Christ, and the third time, myself is whispered so softly that you could hardly hear it, yet it seems to come from all around you as if the leaves rustled with it. And of course, what makes the leaves rustle is the wind, and biblically, the wind is a symbol for the Holy Spirit. Now, I really delve deep into this at this point, and I say, this is obviously a reference to the Trinity, and nobody comes to camp to learn about the Trinity. It's an old-fashioned word. It's a churchy word. How can I bring that word alive, alive to these kids? Well, I point out that everybody, well, almost everybody, uh, even those who don't go to church or con consider themselves Christians, say that God is love. And then I say to them, well, we can't define love, campers. It's an awful hard thing to define, but let me throw out two things to you. Is love more like a mist or a vapor that goes floating out through the universe and is, you know, just hit the outer edges of the Milky Way? Or is love something that one person has for another person? And they all immediately answer it's the second of the two. So, in view of the fact that human beings are created, there was a time when they didn't exist, it's the doctrine of the Trinity that tells us something that only a Christian knows, and that is there was never a time when there was no love in the universe. Now, we've come a good ways from the Narnian story at this point, and yet I feel like much of it is implicit in Narnia. There is a second meaning to so many of the incidents and scenes in Narnia, and I always tell the campers that as they grow older, they'll never lose their interest in the Narnia books because they'll be more appreciative of that spiritual meaning. And communicating that spiritual meaning, that is communicating the gospel uh, in the way that Lewis tells it. And it's a way that 
reminds me of the uh, adage, truth is most powerful when it sneaks up on you. Communicating it in that way is a pleasure for me as well as a great privilege.